and chair of this organization, respectively, for having me here today. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, I'll try to keep it brief. I know it's a little warm down here. I, I, I should start by saying it's always a pleasure to follow the commissioner. Uh, he's a pretty amazing guy. As somebody who ran in this year's marathon, I, I happened to run the marathon this year and finished a few minutes before uh, the, the terrible tragedy and the explosions and everything, and, and the response by the first responders was overwhelming. And it was really, uh, for those of us who were near the scene, it was, it was pretty uh, impressive. Uh, as, as horrifying as it was, it was impressive to see the way that the, those people responded. And so uh, we're thankful every day that we have public servants like that. Uh, in addition to uh, being the chief operating officer at Suffolk Downs, I'm a partner in a small business at 77 North Washington the old Scotch and Sirloin uh, building, so uh, many of you look familiar. I think I've been uh, prowling around the neighborhood a little bit. Uh, we should probably be members uh, in that business, uh, so maybe we'll follow up with that. Um, how many of you, uh, by show of hands, have been to Las Vegas, Mohegan Sun, or Foxwoods? <laughs> okay, so this crowd has no moral objection to gaming. I'm gonna take it, right? Um, so we'll see if you think it's a good idea if we, if we have this crazy idea to build a casino uh, over at Suffolk Downs, our 78-year-old racetrack, where we've been conducting gambling for 78 years. It's a little like Claude, Claude Rains in Casablanca. That's our business. It's a business we've been in for a while. And we've got a proposal with our partners from Caesars Entertainment to convert that 161 acres, which currently has occupancy permits for 38,000 people. When they built the track in 1935, racing, boxing, and baseball were the three most popular sports in America. And the track actually held crowds of 35, 36, 37,000 on a regular basis. So we start with a massive facility. Uh, how many people have been to Suffolk Downs here? Okay, that's good. I wish you'd come back a little more often. But um, we start with a big facility. We start with 161 acres. Uh, we really have several advantages. We think our primary advantage is being part of the city of Boston. Okay, so we had made some news last week, host community agreements with Boston and Revere. That allows us to get to the next stage of the process. This is a process that started in November of 2011 when the governor signed into law the expanded gaming bill in Massachusetts. The Massachusetts Gaming Commission, the five members were appointed in January of that year, or January of 2012. They've been working uh, for the last 19 months, uh, getting ready to make decisions about awarding licenses. Suffolk Downs is competing for the license in the Boston area. There are four licenses total, one for a slot parlor that can go anywhere in the Commonwealth. We're not competing for that license. Uh, that's a very limiting license. You can only do 1,200 machines. Uh, no table games, things like that. Uh, we think that the, the cultural hub and the center, uh, the cultural center, the capital city of Boston deserves a better project than that. Uh, so we've, we're competing for one of the destination resort casino licenses. There will be three of those. There's one with a preference for uh, the Wampanoag, the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe in the southeastern part of the state. They're looking at Taunton. Uh, there's one in the western part of the state that three different developers are competing for. We are competing against Foxwoods, uh, which has a parcel of land in Milford, and uh, Steve Wynn, who has a project in Everett. Okay, so the, by April of next year, the Gaming Commission has said it's going to award one license among the three of us, and, and we're hoping that you're supportive of our efforts, and, and I'll try to tell you now a little bit why. I'll start with an overview of gaming development in the United States over the last uh, 40 years or so. Um, casinos have changed. Where they are, uh, there's been a massive and exponential growth. We've gone from two states, Nevada and New Jersey, 
Uh, and I think a lot of times people's perception of casinos go back to the old days of Vegas and Atlantic City, where in Vegas you have all of these casinos next to each other, and the idea, if, if you bring a customer in off the strip, is to keep them there, right? Um, and, and prevent them from going to a competitor's place next door. Uh, so we went from two states to river boats and slot parlors uh, at different locations with an expansion uh, to, to different suburbs and areas. And, and now what we're seeing is more and more urban casinos, what we call a city integrated resort, okay? And the differences between the old model and the new model is not just where they are, where the casinos are, but how they treat their surrounding community. Okay, in a city integrated resort, in the old model, the idea was to pull everybody in and keep them there. In a city integrated resort, if we are the only casino destination for 40 miles around here, okay, we have the ability to partner and collaborate with local area attractions, all right? And Caesars has done the best job of this of any casino developer in the world. They manage 53 facilities around the world, mostly in the United States. And it's one of the reasons we partnered with Caesars. So some of the benefits that come with this type of development are jobs, uh, 2,500 construction jobs and 4,000 permanent jobs. Our host community agreements give preferences to both Boston and Revere residents. The average uh, casino job is about uh, 40 to $42,000 a year with benefits. These are union jobs with benefits. There's a wide range of service jobs and management jobs and gaming floor jobs. It also comes with investment in the community. We're making significant investment in our local communities as part of this. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this spending with regional and local vendors. Uh, one of the reasons people, uh, one of the first things people ask me when we say we, we've been talking about this now since 2007, how are you going to put a casino at Suffolk Downs uh, with the road, uh, the traffic issues? And we all know we have tough traffic. I'm from Salem, so I've driven in and out of the North End for years and in and out of East Boston for years. I know every shortcut. I know uh, what the trouble spots are. So we're proposing $45 million in road and infrastructure improvements as part of our development. That is all private money. Uh, the state cannot invest in infrastructure related to these projects. We have to do it all ourselves. We're proposing spending $1 billion total to build and, and uh, develop this, this resort. So $45 million to make sure people can get there is not, is not really out of line when you think about it, okay? Uh, to make sure that people can get there uh, as quickly as possible. Representative, I'm sorry, I didn't see you earlier. Thanks for joining us. Representative Michael Witz is here. Did you come in late? Oh, pardon me. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, and we're also making lots of capital investments in the local community, uh, commitments to local spending. And I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we get through the presentation. I only have a couple more slides here, but the main feature of our transportation and infrastructure improvements is a flyover along Route 1A over Boardman Street. Is anybody familiar with the Boardman Street intersection? Right there is the cross uh, that marks the, the historic location of the Madonna Shrine on the top of Orient Heights, which is this building here, down here. And what we're proposing doing is actually building around the Courtyard Marriott, the old airport Holiday Inn, building a flyover that will take people up and over that intersection and drop them down before the Suffolk Downs main uh, entrance at Tomasello and, and where our sign is, okay? So that, along with significant improvements at Route 1 and Route 16 in Revere, adding missing off ramps, uh, improvements at Harris Street and, and 16, improvements along Revere Beach Parkway, Curtis Street and other neighborhood improvements, that's the bulk of our transportation plans. Anybody interested in more detail on those, they're all on the website at suffolkdowns.com backslash transportation. Of particular interest to the North End business community may be this program. It's another one of the reasons we partnered with Caesars Entertainment. Total Rewards is the world's leading loyalty program. There are over uh, 40 million members in the Total Rewards program. Some of you may have wampum cards. Uh, if you go to Foxwoods, they still call, call them that, or, or part of Mohegan Sun's loyalty program. Uh, basically, in, in a lot of resort casinos, you can spend your points you earn in the development. 
What's different about total rewards is you can spend your points outside the development. When I said earlier that Caesars is the best at integrating with, with the local community, they have a 450 room hotel and a, and a standalone casino in downtown New Orleans, right in the center of the city. And they spend about $9 million a year on hotel rooms with eight or 10 local hotel partners. And they spend four and a half to $5 million a year with about 20 restaurant partners in New Orleans. Okay, so they take their guests and they, as I, we go back to the beginning, I said, you're not trying to trap everybody and keep them in. They take their guests and they bring them out to the community and let them experience the amenities of the community. So I know Michael Masseri from Caesars Entertainment has been in town. Uh, I think he's met with some of you individually. Uh, John Payne from Caesars, we've, we've uh, met with some of the people in the North End restaurant community, the North End business community. Our agreement, our host community agreement with the city of Boston says that we have to spend $50 million annually with Boston businesses, okay? A facility of this size, when it's all built out, would spend about $150 million annually on goods and services. So we are committed to spending 50 million of that with Boston businesses. So total rewards, we'll have 40 to 60 restaurant partners in the Boston area, okay? And we'll be looking uh, for ways to spread the economic benefits of our development to the local business community. And not only are we looking for ways to do that because of our agreement with the city of Boston, it's part of how our application will be judged. When we go to the Gaming Commission with our final application in December, part of how they're gonna make their decision is do you incorporate the local community and, and do you do things to, to grow jobs locally, to improve tourism, to attract visitors, to help the local economy. That's part of the way they're gonna make their decision. We will have restaurants at the facility. Uh, we have uh, 14 or 15 different restaurants, six or seven fine dining concepts, the types of restaurants you'd find at a casino, uh, but also something on the second floor, a 400 uh, seat uh, fast serve, uh, I, I guess calling it a food court doesn't do it justice. A very, very nice, uh, highly designed concept that we're gonna roll out uh, the renderings of in a couple of weeks called Streets of Boston. So that'll be six or seven concepts around the 400 seats on the second floor of one of our casino spaces. And those are reserved specifically for local restaurants, okay? So some of our uh, restaurant program in the main floors of the gaming area will be local, some will be national, some will be people that aren't in town now and, and uh, might wanna come to town. Uh, but, but those specific, those areas uh, around the, the streets of Boston are being held for local restaurant tours. We also have the ability to market to the 45 million total rewards customers of Caesars around the world and bring them to Boston, okay? So this, this also helps. We've got partnerships uh, in addition to the hotel and restaurant partnerships I talked to. Uh, we're looking to partner with the Convention and Exhibition Center. As part of our proposal, we could have proposed to build a big meeting space, an exhibition space, but we've got a brand new convention center down the street. So why would we do that? We're better off partnering with that facility. Similarly, uh, we could propose to build a big entertainment space. When the Beatles played at Suffolk Downs in 1966, the racetrack, we put the stage on the racetrack and 25,000 people showed up. You would think that uh, all the people in the community that tell me they were there, about 75,000 people showed up, but uh, so we have the ability to do outdoor entertainment. We have the ability to do special events. We are not building a 2,400 seat arena. We are partnering with the city center and the Wang, the, the, the Schubert, the Colonial, so that they will book the entertainment with us for our venue, and we will take customers and send them into Boston. Again, a different way than your normal uh, traditional casino marketing approach. For those uh, for whom sustainability and, and commitment to uh, the environment is important, uh, and we think it is, uh, we will have the greenest casino facility in the United States, and we will be releasing details on that next week, uh, including one of the three or four largest solar array fields, private solar arrays in, in the Commonwealth, 
and uh, the largest stormwater harvesting system in, in the state. And then finally, uh, as I started with, uh, one of the reasons that we think it is a benefit for the Gaming Commission, if we're fortunate enough to, to, to earn a license, is to choose Suffolk Downs is because it preserves uh, something. I, I walked into Suffolk Downs in 1991. Uh, I had never been to a racetrack before. And it was closed at the time. And, and I was part of a group that reopened it in 1992. And, and we've been running since then. But uh, gaming development at Suffolk Downs preserves racing. Uh, we will have a racetrack not only, and, and, and we will be able to make the racetrack better, make the quality of racing better, attract some of the stables that we've lost to other tracks uh, through the years, preserve lots of open space in East Boston that our neighbors, especially our neighbors at Orient Heights, find of value, and, and preserve uh, some agribusiness in the state, uh, some family farms, uh, where we've seen lots of examples in other states that have added gaming to the racing facility where the racing has improved. So that's a brief snapshot and I'm happy to take any questions from anybody that has any. I know it's kind of a hot day. Yes, Donna. We are planning two hotels. Uh, the 300 uh, room Caesars Hotel that is the signature of the property. Uh, as you come in the main entrance, you see two renderings of it here. One there and, and, and one here that shows, this shows sort of an overview of the whole property with both hotels, the racetrack building and the racetrack here. Um, I kind of, I, I, in the interest of time, I, I, I didn't take people through the different renderings. Uh, this one here is, is the second hotel, 150 room boutique hotel. Uh, we're talking to different hoteliers about that opportunity. And then uh, that's the grandstand completely redone and refurbished as, as a casino space. We are planning to preserve the clubhouse for racing and soundcasting. There would be